Walt Disney World. Yeah. Hello everyone, today is a special day for me, it's my birthday and anniversary and we are about to go have breakfast in a castle, so zippity doo da day, follow me. Gold flake in the middle, strawberry on the left, and blueberry on the right. Wow. Congratulations! Happy, happy anniversary! Happy anniversary! Happy birthday! I love you. Cheers to you. Cheers. Wait a second. Oh, hold on. Cheers, Cheers. to you. Cheers. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Mm -hmm. Cheers to you, Mr. Leo. Oh. That is amazing. That's amazing. Wow. All right, folks. I got the tenderloin of the beef. And uh, looks like rich folks too. Delicious. Oh my god, that's good. If that's what you're into. Mm. Happy birthday, Josh. Let's see if there's anything to reveal. Oh, oh wow. Oh it is the last slip of my lord. Oh my goodness, that is beautiful. Happy birthday, I love you so wow, much. Wow, thank you so much. So okay guys, I'm not a big dessert guy, but wow. That is beautiful. Just wow. I mean, that, that's all you can say about that. Uh, that is the lost slipper. It was in, it was in my pudding the whole time. It's for the 50th anniversary. Wow. Uh, that's special. For our anniversary and for your birthday. I love you. Thank you so much, Hillary. I love you. Happy anniversary. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> is there anything else at the moment we can get? No, thank that you. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, guys. I thought everything was edible, but uh, that's a real flower. And I ate one. And uh, it was, in fact, edible. But it also definitely tastes like a real flower. <laughs> uh, 
ass off.
sing right around the party. And thanks for sticking with me. Hey, picnickers! Told you nothing was gonna go wrong. <laughs> Folks, we're about to do Splash Mountain, and this one's gonna be pretty special. They're about to change it, so this will be the last time through the Briar Patch. Oh, yeah. Run away from that! 
muskrat moonshine. Yeah, <laughs> 
There's Old Faithful. Easy, don't mess that stuff yet. How's that, Luke? Did you have so much fun on the choo-choo train? Oh, I got your mind, buddy. Let's go on the fastest ride in the universe. Let's go on the fastest ride in Magic Kingdom. <laughs> you guys are. Hi, Bog. You're insane. Why is the water hot? Ah. Alrighty, Mr. Young. I'm not too scared. Oh, you're just gonna get launched off into space. <laughs> now this ride is a dark ride. Oh, that's great. So I won't be at the sea. Dark or fast?
good, buddy. Woo -hoo -hoo. And we're here. We've reached our final destination. Don't forget your shoes, Mr. Leo. <laughs> He's lost his shoes. That was so fast it blew his shoes off. How did you lose your shoes? Oh, that's because they got stuck. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm good not being in it. I committed it, so... Exit this way. Yep. Thank you. Am I you too. How was that, buddy? Sick! That was a cool ride. That is a cool ride. Oh, it was fast. I like that. It wasn't too fast. It wasn't too fast. It was, like, ridiculous. Like, Nobody beat us, fry us, and eat us, and bring us in. We would 
this way. I almost bounced right out of the ride. Oh my god. Watch out for heaven of the noodles. They still honey. Heaven of honey. Oh man. Nobody said nothing about heaven. Come back. 
Let's not. Grab some strangers' fish. One and two. Okay, one and two. Keep going now. All right, come on, bud. We'll put Luke in between me and you, okay? Oh, no. Yes. Why? He has to be in the middle. Oh. Otherwise, you can ride with your mother. You must be considerate to the younger pirates. All right. Welcome aboard, Mr. Luke. There you go. Buddy. Alright, scoot over a little bit. There you go. Alrighty, Mr. Luke. Are you ready, Luke? There we go. There's his butt? I don't think so, right? Boy, there is a little drop on this one, Leo. It drops you into the darkness. I think he died of the scurvy.
Jesus or the Jack.
go guys. Ooh. Ghost horses. I don't see a horse there. Let me know in the comments if you guys do. That's pretty creepy. We're going to do the haunted mansion. Rest in peace, Cousin Hewitt. We all know you didn't do it. Here rests Walter P. Bender. He rode the glory on a fender. Here lies good old Fred. A great big rock fell on his head. Here lies Brother Clyde, planted here beneath the sun. When hinges creak in doors chambers, and strange frightening sounds echo through the halls, where the candlelights flicker, where the air is deathly still, well, over here, we're gonna have to fill up this whole room. Ghosts are present, practicing their terror. We must make room for all the human souls. Haunted Mansion. I am your host, your ghost host. <laughs> oh, that was clever. Our tour begins here in this gallery. Here where you see paintings of some of our guests as they appeared in their corruptible mortal state. Kindly step all the way in, please, and make room for everyone. There's no turning back now. At this time, kindly step away from the walls and gather in towards the dead Your center. Your cadaverous power betrays an aura of foreboding, almost as though you sense a disquieting metamorphosis. Is this haunted room actually stretching? Or is it your imagination? Mm. And consider this dismaying observation. This chamber has no windows and no doors. <laughs> Which offers you this chilling challenge to find a way out. <laughs> you prematurely. <laughs> the real chills come later. No. Ghost? As they say. No. Oh no. <laughs> that was so scary. Let's get Luke a Woody doll. Look, he's pointing at it, bro. Is he? Yes. All right, bro. We have to. Let's go do it. We have to. We'll use the what do you want? Hold on, that. 
Do you want this one, Matt? Do you want the little one? Which one do you want? No, I'm just kidding. What about this one? How about that one, Mr. Luke? You want it? What do you think of that? I think he does. Hold on, wait. Let's get uh, something for the little one, too. How about let's get Logan Buzz Lightyear? Okay. Yeah, right. there you go, buddy. Luke, Mr. Woody. No, Sheriff Woody, excuse me. That's the legit Buzz Lightyear. Okay, so we got the toy box buzz, and then Woody. Can I see it, buddy? So I can scan it. Here, let him see it. Thank you. Okay, here's Woody. There you go. Okay, here's Woody. Can you hold that for No, I thank you. Okay, so $54.10. Toys, folks. We had to buy the Sheriff Woody doll. Anything for our little Luke? Even though that Buzz Lightyear is amazing. I want the Buzz Lightyear in here. Well, here comes Sleepy Doll. Hopefully, he does it. Yes. Here comes right there, Sleepy Doll. That was awesome. Oh boy, it's going to be crazy. Alright, Mr. Luke. Alright, alright. All right, you okay? All right. Y'all ready to dash around in this backyard? Are you ready, Mr. Logan or Luke? Oh my gosh. I get their names mixed up. I get their name mixed up, Mr. Luke. Are you ready? Hold on tight, Mr. Logan, Luke.
Yes, sir, Mr. Luke. You got a friend in me, buddy. Step out to your right. Good dog. You did great. <laughs> Woohoo! That was nuts. Beat it. 
defeated the evil Zerg. Good job, Space Ranger. Let's see the score, right? I got 87,900. We are. We did pretty good. I don't know. All right, good job, Leo. Saved our lives. We are eternally grateful. All right, folks, we are going back. I'm buying that Buzz Lightyear toy because usually I wouldn't, but it's kind of pricey. But it's kind of hard to find one of that quality. So we gonna get it. She is. That's the box of it. That's better. So, I think your best bet is to go down that, that way and go in front of the uh, Chinese theater. There's a lot of different food stands there, so you should probably find some over there, okay? We'll go ahead and check out. All right, come back with me over here. How much are these? Those are 22. You made it through most of the day though, so I wouldn't blame you if you didn't want one. Yeah, but tomorrow. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> wait till tomorrow, you can get them with the cold water too. Uh, so, pros and cons. That's uh, okay. It's okay. Fine. I don't get but it. you can ice it tonight, yeah. or I mean tomorrow morning, so. I'm gonna try to not sell it to you. Thank you. Thank you for the advice. Okay, well, let me just check. Yeah, good speed. Good speed. Nice. Cool fan. And then Buzz Lightyear. Yes, sir. Those are kind of hard to find. Anywhere else. Anyway. Oh, you know? Yeah. All right. I guess a little hectic. People love their Buzz. Yeah, man. When Especially. that new Jesse store opened, everyone was asking, where's the Jesse's? Yeah, dude. Especially okay. like a Walmart and stuff. They don't have like, they're not, yeah. they're not like that. <laughs> Yeah. Not as good quality. Those ones are pretty much the toy from the movie. And that's right. So it's fifty-seven dollars fourteen cents. We doing uh, yeah. cash? Uh, cash and then some credit. Okay, let's see how far we can get. Forty-two. Here they are, folks. Buzz Lightyear and Woody. And the cool thing is, is that apparently they will talk to each other. As much as I would like to keep these things. And not take them out of the box because they're just so darn cool i'm gonna take them out and give them to mr luke because we love him so much <laughs> let's do it okay guys i'm gonna open it and i'll bring you back all right here we go luke is so excited he can barely contain himself so Let's see if they actually talk to each other. Supposedly they do. Let's pull Mr. Woody's string. You guys gonna talk to each other? My name's Woody. They're supposed to detect each other. Oh, infinity. Guide me on. Oh. That's a secret mission in a charted tree. Let's go. No time to explain. Attack. And one cool thing about Mr. Buzz here, his wings actually work. And he's got karate chop action. <laughs> what do you think of that, Mr. Luke? The slingshot maneuver is all we've got. Full speed ahead. There you go, buddy. He's all yours. To infinity and beyond. <laughs> so, they're just snake in my boots. <laughs>
Awesome, thank you. That's my last day. Thank you. Look, you can change it. Yeah. That's it. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Alright everyone, see you later. I got a feeling. Alright, that's better. Now get some energy out there. Clap those hands together. Come on. As loud as you can go. Break the decibel level. One, two, three. that real quick everyone can you guys help me out real quick can you guys help me out all right everyone we need the countdown and we need to say make it glow on the count of three in order for everything the whole party everyone to come back that way we can keep this party going till 11 who's ready to party all night okay everyone let's get it going on the count of three i want you to scream make it glow let's go one Two, three! <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Kawa Punga, excuse me. I hope I don't regret my life decisions. Hey, and there go, pro. You should be fine. You're waterproof, right? It's got a buckle, but it does have that on the back. Yeah, it might not be able to do it, huh? If you hold it like this, if you can hold it like facing down. That's a good idea. Now you're thinking. Because then it'll get you when you want to. It's not going to show anything but the slide, but if you have it facing down on you, with your hand. What do I do with the shoes? With the shoes? Yeah. You put them both in one hand, okay. and then you're going to pass that other hand like this. Okay, I'm not scared. You're scared. Everyone, stand there, brother. You got that license? You got to take off the shoes. Right, Mr. Leo. Wait, 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 wait. Wait till we get to go. Wait. You good? All right, sit down. Leo, sit. Don't go yet. Cross your leg. Like this, right? And lay back. Thank you. Woo-hoo-hoo! <laughs> that was a humongous Kalapanga! <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> You're all the time. 
<laughs> Out of all the rides, bro, you gonna fix the stern burner? Yeah. Big yes. <laughs> More content. More content. More content. I don't like this content. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Wait for the green. Red means no, green means go. <laughs> Does that feel good on your toes? All right, go, Mr. Leo. Go, go, go. See ya. My sterns are burning. <laughs> Let's hang in the way for the whole time. Alright, alright, alright. Right and left. I was just about to say that. Pilot on the right. 
Pull back on the stick to fly up. And push both to fly down. Weapons are on life.
Hello. Yes, sir. The red card in your hand can go right up here at the top. These are security clearance credentials, and if you can't read them, they just tell us that you are not stormtroopers. All right. Yes. We would never lie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what liars always say. So no. we're going to have to figure that out. That red card will go up at the top because we will take it from there, but in the meantime, We get you into this room very quickly, but that's because this room is not seen by most. Most people in Batu don't even know it's here, but all that we collect, this is truly our everything. And the people that you see protecting our exits, watching my back, they are the best people in the galaxy, and you will meet them for yourself later. In the meantime, you can call me Kembe. Together we make up a faction called the Gatherers whose mission is to do just that. We gather, we collect, we search the places that most people would just forget about. We travel to the abandoned outposts, the battle-ravaged lands, those empty temples. If you look close enough in those places, though, they're never empty. There's always parts, pieces, and history that's left behind. History that we bring back to this very room, but lucky for us, well, at least so far, the stormtroopers don't seem to know the difference between relics old junk. But we do. We are the ones who see the true potential, so if they made their way in here, they would see worthless clutter. And we see the future. Oh, but speaking of the future and the past and potential, have you heard the legend of Rey? Yes? Yeah. Good! But she is leading. It's a spark of hope. A spark of hope that brought you to build a lightsaber. The lightsaber has been wielded by our greatest heroes but it's also been wielded by some of our darkest enemies. It is elegant, it is enigmatic. To build the lightsaber is an art, because the lightsaber is a true reflection of the building. The force connects them. That connection will be yours to experience today, if I ever stop talking. <laughs> Shall we begin? Yes. yes. Good. We begin with the kyber crystal. The kyber crystal is hard for us gatherers to find because it's unique. It can focus the energy of the force. It can create a lightsaber. So keep in mind the color of your crystal will reveal the color of your blade. Like the blue crystal, wielded by Master Obi-Wan Kenobi and his apprentice Anakin Skywalker. Now it is wielded by Rey. The green crystal, Qui-Gon Jinn, Ahsoka Tano, Master Yoda himself, and Luke Skywalker. The violet crystal. This one is incredibly rare and incredibly beautiful, like the one wielded by Master Mace Windu. And red. Red is known as the color of power. It is wielded by Dark Maul, Asajj Ventress, Darth Vader, and now Kylo Ren. But why discuss the past when what we came here for is you, our future? I don't want you to see light side, dark side, I just want you to see what crystal is yours. So close your eyes, clear your mind, and think of one of those four colors. Let the color choose you. Act on your instinct. Now open your eyes. Reach out and select your cover crystal. Look at that box, you'll find your chassis. 
Yeah. You'll find your activation plates, your grips, your emitters, and your pommel caps. That is a lot of words to throw at you all at once, but don't worry because you have a wonderful expert across from you. They are smart, they are funny, they are kind. And Tato is actually here as well. Sorry, Tato. Uh, brothers, I have one last question for all of you. Is everyone ready? Yes! Let's build. So I go right there in the little spring, right? And then line it. You can go to the sharpest point you see. So think of it as a changing out of the headache. Just because, guys, this is the hardest part of the build to take your time, right? Don't be afraid to ask for some help. Is that right? Make sure you got it right. Here you go. So we're going to go call them five and choose one matching set of your switches. Would you like some assistance? On the bottom side, on the chair you choose, there's a blue and a red. Right. Same thing on your chest. You're going to match them up. You're going to push it right around. Right. We almost had it. So do you like these two or do you like these two? Alright. Moving on to column five. Uh -huh. Just the end of the They are so it's going to go like this, the red is going to go directly on the red, and the blue directly on the blue, just like that. Slide this one up for me. Okay, we're gonna go call one and two. You're gonna choose two grips from whichever you choose. The thick bronze side, so it's gonna go on your chassis first. Push down, twist. Same thing with the other side. So he's gonna tell you how to put them on, but I want you to be able to hear the sound.
What do you think? Do we like it? I love it. So the pieces that come from the elements are said to call to those who have this special connection to the force, this ability to kind of connect with it throughout nature. You often see Jedi training in nature in the elements. But the bantha leather calls to those who have a connection to creatures and species. They say that having both the elements, the, the nature element, but also having that animal element creates this bond that if you were ever in trouble, you could find the weather, animal species come to your aid. But you also have that strong connection to that, that grip so that you can feel the neck and then back into that stage. That's awesome. Yeah, one of the best. Great job. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that right one, That's a great choice. Very rare. It is, and let me tell you, it's more and more rare the fewer young ladies we have because I am a brave woman. I am not a stupid woman, and I do not reach my hand into a girl's right horse mouth. So this is the young lady from the right horse. Can you imagine? Have you ever loved her? Yeah, I bet it was really small, right? This is the right horse baby. So the Rancor flights back at Ovid's Tavern? Absolutely. Now, also. absolutely. We have to end the considering that they do say these call those who bond with species and animals. We want to make sure we don't get on the wrong side of the Rancor. You might actually find that you can create that bond with Rancor now. It's a really good job. Oh. And having that band the all right in the palm of that hand, you have to kind of switch and use it for that village. Oh. It's waiting so that it does so that it's really good. So practice it, practice that first She is the darkness. Little girl. Yeah. <laughs> Don't mess with her. She'll, she'll force choke you. <laughs> so they're mine. <laughs>
should not be dropped on the ground. <laughs> what you were about to say would have been a lot better, but either way, we are pleased to present to be Savior Chief to you, The galaxy needs you, and you are one step away from that journey beginning. A journey that is led by the lightsaber you created here today. It's a reflection of you, so allow it to guide your path. Now before you leave, raise your sabers once more and activate. I love you. I love you. I love you too, Leo. Love you, Leo. Love you. Love you, little buddies. And you too, Mr. Logan and Luke. Oh. Incoming transmission from Ray. Resistance scum. 
Now bring down your shields and prepare to be boarded. Now quick, get there! They're on the location of our secret base. Tell them nothing. The future of the Resistance is at stake. I have a bad feeling about this. Now on the command, the first order. All of you will immediately disembark, proceed on the corridor on your right for processing and interrogation. Now get out. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, they're just done, Trippage. <laughs> We better go. Yeah. <laughs> Secrets really. Yeah, <laughs> no, he's, he's definitely not a Jedi. Yeah. Definitely not. Oh. <laughs> Any bad. Like the story or fanny You know any secrets? Hold on. You do, do you? Don't tell me. We don't know any secrets. Oh. <laughs> this way. Leo, this way. Thank you, thank you. Okay. As always. Alrighty, we'll go. Remember your colors and do not on the walls, otherwise we paint them. Don't touch the walls or they'll make you clean them. <laughs> There, Luke. See the stormtrooper up there? Look up here. It doesn't look very friendly. There. Leave us. Yes, General. Enemies of the First Order, we will soon snuff out your ego resistance. You chose the wrong side, and now you will pay. Uh oh. No, they, they found you out, Leo. Oh, I, I think they know. know. Yep. They don't. You know the location of the secret base, and I oh, will take it for you. We are needed on the bridge. Okay. Keep the prisoners here. I will return to finish this personally. Give me a quick getaway so 
if it's on your head or in your hands, put it away or hold it very tightly. This is R5. Your recovery rhythm is on our side. It's going to get you out of here. Good luck. May the force yes. be with you. Thanks, sir. Yep, it's in my bag. Oh, don't tight, Mr. Luke. Okay. Take this corridor to the turbo lift, then head down to the escape pod base. Those droids are programmed to return you to Batu. Hurry and don't get caught. Lieutenant Mike will guide you. Recruits, for your safety, stay seated with seatbelts securely fastened. Keep hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the transport and supervise your children. Here we go, Blue Beam Leader. <laughs> Tell them it's a prisoner transfer. <laughs> Did it work? Good. Now get a move on. There's a clear path to the turbo lifts at the end of the hallway. Turn right. Let's get out of here, Sandy Peter. Probe droid. You're lucky it didn't spot you. Take those turbo lifts and stay out of trouble. Hey, you're not authorized. Wait.
wreckage? I've got a bad feeling about this. Uh, no, sir, he came down to the wreckage site. That doesn't sound good. He was the backbone of this operation. If anything happened to him, it Scans last show him in Sector 4. Should have waited for him. Uh, sir, you had no choice. You had to get those data tapes off the ship. We never leave anyone behind. with this drill right here. Put your head right on top. 
Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Now we're gonna go ahead and get yours out here.
is it. I told you if you blink, you'd miss it. <laughs> is that the funnest ride you've ever rode in your life? That was sick. Yeah, dude. Oh, oh I love that ride. Seconds. Goodness. Uh, can we talk? Oh, that was amazing. I feel better now. If your mother is not... VIPs, exit to your right. I told you we'll we were VIPs. Next tour. Cheese! Do you got the car? Yep, that's us. <laughs> Give us your look. Come on, come on. Dana, I'm your neck, party of six. Hello. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be so much fun. Ooh, we're gonna watch a movie. And get some food. Are you hungry? Thank you. You and him can sit together if you want. And then me and Luke. Alright, alright. Alright, we'll be back when the food comes. Look at this corner. We're so desperate to do Tower of Terror. We're actually doing the standby lane. Yeehaw. What could possibly go wrong, right? Should be fine. Screams. What have we done? What have we done, Trevor? Take it from Oh, the things I do for YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> you unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound. A dimension of sight. A dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Hollywood, 1939. Amid the glitz and the glitter of a bustling young movie town at the height of its golden age, the Hollywood Tower Hotel was a star in its own right, a beacon for the show business elite. Now, something is about to happen that will change all that. The time is now, on an evening very much like the one we have just witnessed. Tonight's story of the Twilight Zone is somewhat unique and calls for a different kind of introduction. This, as you may recognize, is a maintenance service elevator, still in operation, waiting for you. We invite you, if you dare, to step aboard, because in tonight's episode, you are the star. And this elevator travels directly to the Twilight Zone. All right, friends, take a left down that exit and enjoy your stay. What's it done? You hey, messed up big time next time, buddy. You messed up. Mistakes were made. Let's all pour able to post this, boys. Oh, we're going to post this. Let's hope he doesn't die before he doesn't I bet you I get more views if I die. I bet you get so many views. You <laughs> pop <laughs> You don't want to be over here? Mm -mm. I want to be front. <laughs> you sure? I want the best experience. You'll probably get it there, to be honest. We're going to sit next to each other. 
Yeah. In the front. <laughs> We're not in the front. Uh -huh. We're not in the front. Oh, who's in the front? It doesn't matter. I'm sure your view will be just fine. Will that be worth it? Yes, no! I'm just gonna flip you! Ha ha ha! You do what you make of me. What have we done? What have we actually done? Just remain calm. I'm not remaining calm! Don't panic. Okay, guys, this is probably a good time to tell everyone I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> I'm doing this for you, YouTube, so you better like and subscribe. Make sure that yellow strap is securely fastened, bro. There's a hidden Mickey somewhere around here. One stormy night long ago, five people stepped through the door of an elevator and it was a nightmare. That door is opening once again. No, not this time, it's opening for good. <laughs>
Yes, I can't feel my toes. <laughs> Oh, you better like and subscribe for that one, YouTube. My friend is dead! I heard it! Oh, no! Oh, no! I think I'm dead. It's a friendly I'm word. Dead. Something you didn't find in any guidebook. I don't Next think this is heaven. Next time you check into a district, tell them it's better set of Hollywood. Make sure you know just the wrong way. I think we went the wrong way. I think we went down instead of up, boys. Of the Twilight Zone. Oh, no! Oh, this is how they get you, boys. The gift shop. Just keep moving, Mr. Leo. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Don't worry about all those shinies. Well, after a long day at the park, sometimes a nice long bus ride can be quite nice, relaxing. Unless you got a double stroller, and then uh, good luck with that. Leo, do you want to be in this video? Chris, sit back here with your Today, I recommend to have those cameras out and ready. That's because we can see animals at any point and at any moment. Now, we won't be able to stop for all of them, and they're certainly not going to stop for us. Now, do hold on to all of your belongings as well because I cannot stop for anything that does fall out. Now, if something does fall out, you put your hand up, I'll put my hand up, and we're both going to wave goodbye. <laughs> and you also keep in mind we're just about to enter these animals' homes, so we do want to be respectful towards these animals, so please do not for any reason call out to them, yell out to them, make noises towards them, or disturb these animals in any sort of way. Now we are going to begin our journey at the Little Terry Forest. Here animals depend on camouflage. They are going to camouflage and hide themselves well with the local and surrounding areas. I do spot bamboo. 
But what's behind that bamboo on the left is the bongos, which are those animals with those horns bongos. on the left. Now, the bongos have the nickname the ghost of the forest, and that's because they're always hiding, and you won't always find them in the forest. Now, the horns do oh, also lean backwards, and they're about 32 to 36 inches long. Very also, a bird coming up. Called a saddle-billed stork. Oh, and an okapi out there in the distance on the right. Now, okapis are very shy and reclusive forest animals. They have white stripes on their legs, which looks like they're wearing zebra pants, but they're not even relatives to the zebras. They're actually the only living known relatives to the giraffe. Now, one way that we know that is actually because of their skull structure. Now, that bird, which is being walked by a tree in bushes, is called the saddle-billed stork. It's coming up here on the right. Now, you're never going to hear them. That's because they don't communicate. They vocalize by rattling their bills. They also have a wingspan of up to 9 feet and can stand 5 feet tall. Now both males and females look the exact same. The way that you can tell from apart is based on their eye colors. That's because males have brown eyes, females have yellow eyes. Black rhinoceros coming up here on the left. A black rhinoceros weighs about 3,000 pounds and can charge your speeds up to 35 miles per hour. Now, they don't have any known predators. The most awful thing to them is actually humans. That's because they're being poached for their horns, which are made out of keratin, which is also what your fingernails are made out of. So they're ultimately useless. Now, because of poaching, there's less than 5,000 black rhinos left in the world to this day. Nile crocodile out there to the left. Wow. Now they are the largest species of crocodilian in Africa. Their average are 16 feet and can weigh up to 500 pounds. Every now and then they will sit there with their mouths open. They do that to help regulate their temperature and to keep themselves cooled down. Now you also do not want to mess with them. That is because their jaws are actually strong enough that they are able to crush the bones of their prey. and will be stall coming up in just a few moments. Now the zebras will be on the what no right hand side. I don't know my directions apparently. Now these zebras on the right, all the stripes are different. No two zebra stripe patterns will ever look the same. They have a flap under their chin. It's called a dew lap. It helps aid in blood circulation and does also help keep those zebras cool down. Now the Hartman's Mountain zebras, which those three oh two I can't count. There's two, three, I don't know, there's zebras out there. Are the only types of zebras that have that. And a group of zebras is called a dazzle. Just wait till you hear the flamingos, that one's my favorite. Bushes on the left, yep. A lot of bushes. But actually it's the African wild dog. They're all just kind of lying down out there to the left. Now all their spots are different. No two dog coat patterns will look the same. The really good hunters, that's because they're able to exhaust their prey. Now when I say the good hunters, their success rate is about 80%, while a lion's success rate is only about 20%. Great animals on the left, those are the wildebeests. They migrate up to a thousand miles every year and in a groups of up to 1.5 million. Now, an easy way that I personally remember that the wildebeest is my way of their face. It actually kind of reminds me of the beast from Beauty and the Beast. Also, these mounds that are passing both on the right and on the left are called termite mounds, made out of dung, dirt, and saliva. Now, they are hard as concrete from baking in the hot savanna sun, but they're pretty cool, and that's because they're ventilated through the inside. Now, animals will also use them as scratching posts. Now coming up on the left, very wild, it's going to be humans. But also the Maasai giraffe, with humans blocking them. Now these giraffes on the left are the tallest animal in the world. They can stand up to about 20 feet tall. Now they spend a majority of the day eating, so they have a mucus on their tongue. It helps act like a sunblock and will protect their tongue from the sun. Now giraffes also have four stomachs. Now they have long legs. Yep. Helps the mood speeds about 30 miles now. They can only run that fast for a very short amount of time. But they can run at about 10 miles now for a long amount of time. Now when a newborn giraffe is born, they're able to stand and walk within the first hour. And a group of giraffes is called a tower. But if they're ever terrified, then a group of them is called a tower of terror. <laughs> African elephant that is about coming up in a few moments. Those look like it will be on the right hand side. He's just kind of walking along out there on the right. Now the elephants are the largest land animal. We average on 12,500 pounds. Now they have a very sensitive skin. So they're going to often mud bathe with mud, water, dirt on their skin. Now that all does help protect their skin from the sun. See how that elephant's flapping his ears out there? Yeah, that's actually going to help keep themselves cooled down by about 15 degrees. So it's like as if they have their own little mini air conditioning units. Coming up on the left is 
none other than the greater Flamingo. Now these flamingos are not naturally pink. Hey, I know that driver promise. Anyway, these flamingos are not naturally pink. They eat blind shrimp, and in that shrimp is beta keratin. Beta keratin is going to help turn their feathers pink. Now there's a couple of gray flamingos out on that island. Those are the babies. These flamingos are not. Oh, wait, I was just said that fact. They are also the lightest color pink out of all of the flamingos, and get ready for it. A group of flamingos is called a flamboyance. You're welcome. <laughs> yesterday that was fun until I had to tell people look out. Now look at those ostriches. Hey, going full circle. There's ostrich eggs on the way. Those ostrich eggs each weigh about three pounds each. They're going to take about 40 days to hatch. You can fit about two dozen chicken eggs inside of one oh, single danger ostrich egg. And you can also supposedly stand on an ostrich egg and at one point, hey, my BFF, the Bontabonk out there on the left, yeah. He's my BFF. Now, they're almost extinct. Reserves like this one of the few places in the world that you can find one to this day. Now, that is because they're being poached for their coats, which do turn into a Porsche color when in the sun. Dumb poachers. Nobody likes a poacher, do <laughs> Leo, look, it's a Dodo Rex. The Dodo Rexy is real. I always knew it was real. We got awesome mutations too. Oh, the Dodo Rex is shy. <laughs> ah. At night you slow. Little kids are getting left out of it. Floating Island. Wow. That's amazing. Hillary.
Welcome to the Avatar program. Soon, you're going to have a chance to undertake an amazing Navi rite of passage, flying on the back of this powerful animal called an Ikron, or as we call it, a Banshee. The way you're going to do this is by being matched to something called an Avatar. And I'm here to help you guys get ready. But first, we have to scan you for Pandoran microparasites. All right, everyone, stay on your number and move your arms a bit. Okay, start scan. You've all got them. Uh -oh. But don't worry. Uh, That's not good. They're very common around these parts. Uh, let's start the decon. Initiating GMR decon. Stay still over your number. You're not going to feel a thing. You're doing great. Almost done, We're all clear. Great. Now let's go over how all this works. Like I said before, you're going to be matched to these things called avatars, which look a lot like the Na'vi. They're created by blending human DNA and Na'vi DNA. Once we match you to an avatar, thanks to a special link chair, your mind will be able to control that avatar. Using avatars to fly this way was all figured out by my boss, Dr. Jackie Ogden. She leads her science team, which is part of the Pandora Conservation Initiative. And we're here in the Valley of Moara studying banshees and their environment. Over a generation ago, this enormous company called the RDA created a lot of damage to the area through their bad mining practices and conflicts with the Navi. Just like on Earth, it can take decades for ecosystems to recover. One way to understand what's going on with an ecosystem is to study what are called keystone species. These are animals like tigers, jaguars, seals. The banshee is one of these important animals. Dr. Ogden is the foremost expert on studying the Ikron and has spent years researching them. Unfortunately, banshees live high in rookeries and humans can't get anywhere near them without <laughs> becoming their lunch. But the Na'vi and avatars can. Okay, to get you flying on a banshee, we need to find each of you an avatar. Um, let's uh, prep the genetic sampling. I'm on it. Okay, um, first we need to find a compatible match of your genetic material with the genetic material of one of the avatar bodies that we already have. Once we do that, you'll be able to link to that avatar and uh, fly. <laughs> Help us out and move around a bit. Almost. Yes, got him. Now, let's find you your avatar matches. Alright, you've all been matched with avatars. Uh, ooh, looks like they're ready for you in the next room. Uh, when the door opens, please go inside, all the way in, and stand over the same number that you're standing over now. And, uh, and I'll see you in there. Let's go, Leo, let's go. Come on, Leo, let's go. I would scare your scare. <laughs> of course we're going to be flying. Right. Aren't you afraid of heights? How are you, Shabbat? Yes. Oh, God. Okay. Well, this is the only time right now. Thank you, sir. Safety first. Uh, Safety first. Great, you've all made it. Uh, it's important that you can all see me, so move a little if you can't. Before we send you to the link chamber, let's watch this piece by Dr. Ogden, who runs the program. Welcome, everyone. I'm Dr. Jackie Ogden from the Pandora Conservation Initiative. You're about to experience a ceremony that's very special to the Navi, flying on the back of an Ikron, or as we call it, a Banshee. To the Navi, connecting to an Ikran and flying on its back is an incredibly important rite of passage they call Ikni Maya. With permission from the Navi and in partnership with Alpha Centauri Expeditions, we can now bring this amazing experience to you. The way you'll be able to fly is by linking to an avatar that's already on the back of an Ikran. Let's see how this works. 
We establish a link using powerful psionic amplification equipment. A human driver is connected to an avatar, which could be physically hundreds of kilometers away. When you follow our technician into the link chamber, you'll see a series of 16 link chairs. Please go to the number that matches the number you're standing on now. First, stow your gear in the storage containers on the back wall. This should include all bags, cameras, and other items, including cell phones. It's important to push them all the way into the bin. Then get onto the chair as you would a bike. Straddle the seat, step forward, and sit down. Slide your hips forward until you are against the chest pad, and then move your feet all the way forward. Wait until you're seated before you put on your flight visors. Hold onto the hand grips as shown. It's important to hold onto the hand grips at all times. After you're seated, back and leg restraints will be firmly engaged. For your safety, throughout this entire experience, always remain seated and supervise your children. Once the link takes place, you'll be connected to your avatar and sitting on the back of an ecrum. It'll feel like you're really there. Moments later, you'll begin your flight. A Navi guide will lead you out. You'll experience the breathtaking beauty of Pandora, but you might also face some of its greatest challenges. Some of this flight might be intense, but trust your guide and be brave. As the Navi say during this important rite of passage, Sivak Hope, rise to the challenge. Good luck. All right, you ready? Let's get you into the link chamber. Oh, boy.
guys, this is pretty cool. We're here in Pandora, and I got a Night Blossom. It's got boba balls. Looks delicious. And your little babies love them too. Here we are today, we are eating in Pandora. This is amazing. I'll let you guys know how the food tastes. All right guys, we are going to Dinosaur Land instead because this place doesn't have chicken tendies. And uh, that's a no-go. All right, we are at the Restaurantosaurus. If you got kids that want chicken nuggets, this is the place to come. Pandora's food is a little weird. There we go. Now we're talking some normal food. I mean, not exactly healthy food, but uh, it'll do. And that hot dog looks amazing. If you could add some jalapenos to that, mm -mm -mm. my goodness, that'll do. This is gonna be cool. That's a hippo. Wow, they're one of the most dangerous animals in the world. He can fit Leo's whole head in his mouth. Rawr. That's our big boy. Yes. Girl, I don't know. The best fit animal. That is. Yeah. Oh, daddy, he's ready for Oh, yeah. His head's popped out. Oh, he's come back under again. <laughs> Why do you want me to jump? <laughs> Oh, he's sleeping. Hey, that sleepy monkey.
Yeah. You can go ahead of us. Leo, look at the pass. We're checking out this cool. Oh, go ahead, bub. This is probably the coolest line in all of Disney World. I love it. That's a bear skull. That's an orangutan. And there's a gigantic picapus. Or as we know him today, Sasquatch. Pretty cool stuff, guys. You guys can go ahead. <laughs> Go, go. That's one big foot. There we go, guys. Expedition Everest. Lift hill is crazy. Uh, My goodness. big this T-Rex is. So cool. Oh, who's that cute T-Rex? Hey, you are. Hey, you are. Who's that cute? Who's that booze? Stick your head in there, Leo. Should be fun. Mystery of the disappearance. 
since the study of fossils began over 150 years ago. Today that bare bones approach is about to become extinct. In a perfect blending of science and technology, the Dino Institute has created the Time Rover, an amazing vehicle that will literally transport you to the age of the dinosaurs. Uh, that's proprietor, but the result it's a breathtaking journey through a prehistoric world where we'll witness the most spectacular creatures to ever walk the earth. In a moment, you'll be going live to our control center for a comprehensive safety briefing, and then it's on to the tour that will convince you forever that the future is truly in the past. Hello there. Welcome to our little trans-dimensional joyride, folks. I'm Dr. Seeker, your friendly controller and a heck of a paleontologist, if I do say so myself. But let's not talk about me. Let's talk about you and how you can help me make history today with the Time Rover. It's like this. If I can bring you back from the Cretaceous period, it stands to reason that I can bring back a live dinosaur with you. And not just any dinosaur. Take a look at this guy. He's an iguanodon, and I'm certain that he is the key to understanding these magnificent creatures. I tagged him with a locator during an unauthorized field trip. Otherwise, I'd be traveling with you. Right now, our dino should be about here, at the very end of the Cretaceous period. That's where you're going today. I've arrived, it seems, just in time to correct a little misstatement. Dr. Marsh. That is impossibly close to the giant asteroid impact that destroyed most life forms on Earth. Our tools are designed to take you to the early Cretaceous period. And I can assure you that all time rovers have been securely locked on those coordinates. That's right. See? Securely locked. Access denied. <laughs> Continue. Of course. We were just talking about seatbelts. Plug them in, use them. It can get kind of choppy out there, so keep your hands and arms inside the vehicle at all times. Flash photography? I wouldn't. It alters the homing signal and that's not good. Oh, and one more thing. Those locked coordinates? We're in. Now, here's the drill. You follow the homing signal to the iguanodon, then I'll enlarge the transport field and boom, you're back with one additional passenger extra large. And don't worry about that asteroid. You'll be in and out of there before it even breaks the atmosphere. Trust me, what could go wrong? Hey, it's me again. Remember, only you guys are going on this special mission. What's up, guys? Let's do it.
but at least this one's a vegetarian. duck fried rice I hope it's not Donald Duck and this is a Jade Beauty and this is why alcoholics are made because <laughs> it is delicious and we are at uh, the nine dragons so, it's pretty good can't go wrong
Safe track performance testing complete. This concludes your performance testing. You'll be able to see how your Chevrolet custom concept vehicle designs can be set up after you disembark. Please watch your step as you exit. Remember to take all your personal Look what? Wow. Is that your car? That was so cool. Good job, buddy. Even the heroes who went to the moon. But there is one thing they had that you don't have yet. Training. You're here today for flight training, the most thrilling experience that any astronaut candidate will ever have. Before you decide if it's right for you, let me introduce you to your spacecraft. The X-2 Space Shuttle. It's powered by solid hydrogen and can accelerate from zero to 6,000 in 60 seconds. So when you hear the words go for launch, you'll definitely want to hang on. Now you've already been organized into teams, and soon each of you will be assigned a position. Navigator, pilot, commander, or engineer. The success of your mission will depend on all of you working together as a team. I'll be your Capcom, and in a few minutes, I'll give you your specific assignments. But first, our flight director has some safety instructions for you. Lieutenant? Remember the team number you're standing on. When the doors in front of you open, you will be directed to a flight station with that number on it. When you get there, please stand on the circles. During your Orange Team more intense training mission, you will be enclosed inside X-2 flight simulators that produce deep space flying conditions such as turbulence and G-forces. Those who are prone to motion sickness or made uncomfortable by enclosed dark spaces, simulators, or spinning should bypass this experience. <laughs> As you can see, Astronaut flight training isn't like anything you've ever experienced before. It is intense. And if you would like to opt out, just ask any member of the ISTC crew for directions. As for the rest of you, report for your pre-flight briefing. It's go time. It's go time, Mr. Leo. Ask a uniform crew member for directions to the green team, less intense training area. All systems go. Congratulations, team. You have been selected to train for a mission to Mars. Teams are awaiting your arrival at the landing site here at Ballas Marineris. Your mission is to get to that landing site. Your flight path to Mars will take you around the moon for lunar gravity assist. But even with that slingshot, your trip will take three months. So we'll have to put you into hypersleep. Hypersleep activated. Don't worry. It'll only seem like a second or two to you. I'll give you a wake-up call when you get to Mars. T minus three minutes and count. OK, now listen up. Here are your assignments. Navigator, you'll fire the thrusters for lunar orbit insertion and for descent to the surface of Mars. Pilot, on my signal, I'll need you to trigger the second stage rocket. You'll also deploy the shields. Okay, Commander, the you will be responsible for first stage separation and activating manual control for landing. Okay. Engineer, when it's bedtime, you will activate hypersleep. You will also extend the wings for landing. Don't worry. When it's time to push the buttons, they will light up. Then I'll give you the go. One last thing. In the event of an emergency landing, there are control sticks at every crew position. Okay, Lieutenant. Any Good final friend. instructions for our new kids? When the flight bay doors open, follow the markings on the floor to your capsule. Then move all the way across, taking your crew position in the cockpit, and stow all personal items in the compartment in front of you. I'm not nervous. Then reach up and pull down your restraint. Now listen carefully. 
Leaning forward, closing your eyes, or looking left or right during your flight could disorient you. So idea. keep your head back against the headrest. Keep your eyes open at all times and focus straight ahead, even if you start to feel disoriented. They're all yours, Capcom. Even if you start to feel a little bit. Well, I guess that's everything. Good luck, Mars team. Keep your head You straight. are on the clock. That way you don't black out, Mr. We are Follow the markings on the floor. Your extra trainer. Follow the markings on the floor. Your extra trainer. Left, left. 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 Capcom, come on. Welcome aboard, team. After you get settled, look out your buttons. Alright, buddy. Navigator, welcome aboard. Now remember, All right, guys, during the mission, you will be initiating lunar orbit right, and descent. Here we go. Warning, instrument panel closing. Oh, storm's flight. If needed, space is Pilot, the X2 is an excellent ship. All you have to do is fire the second stage and deploy the shields. All right. Surgeon, how are we doing? All good for launch. We go have a surgeon. Commander, just remember your assignments. First stage separation and manual control. Time to do the loading flight plan. plan. Multitasking, it's fine. Engineer, just a reminder, you will activate hypersleep and extend the wings. Our navigator oh, and uh, engineer calling off today, so uh, me and Leo gotta do a little uh, multitasking. Oh, you guys are no multi we We've got everything. People. Everything's under control. I think. Okay, remember, Mr. Leo, keep your head back. And look straight forward. Otherwise, you could black out. Is that what the hypersleep's supposed to do? Oh, Rosanna. Okay. What is this about them? Yeah, we're now. <laughs> 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 Except there's literally puking bags. Oh, what does this button do? It does nothing, nothing does uh -oh. it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Fire! Clipped it. Oh, I shouldn't have pressed it. <laughs> Why did I press that button? Oh, 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 oh,
Okay, heads back, releasing restraints. Yee now hi. push the restraints up. Be sure to gather all your belongings oh. and follow the heroes out. <laughs> it sounds like we're going forward. Right? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Dizzy now, huh? We are here at my favorite restaurant, the Liberty Tree. It's all you can eat Thanksgiving dinner. You can't beat that. Here it is, folks. All you can eat. Man, that roast beef looks good. That's the good stuff right there. Oh, there we go. Some mashed potatoes, precious. Oh, I'm starting to get full, guys. But. I stand by it. Still favorite restaurant in the whole world. <laughs> Highly recommend the Liberty Tree.
those who led you here filled with hope in search of this magic, leave inspired, changed by what they discover. If you didn't too long for this journey, you too will find what you seek and perhaps something even greater. So long as you simply believe.
comes against you. A journey may leave a scar. But scars can heal and reveal just who you are. The people you love will change you. The things you learn will die. And nothing on earth can silence the quiet voice still inside you. Thank you. 